Hey everyone, we are back with a little bit of a hiatus on our end, but uh, nonetheless, we're back in action. It was, I know, a busy couple weeks with, with everything, with the holidays and travel, but we're back uh, with PU Talk number seven, so, or eight. Look at eight, me. I don't man, even know, yeah. man. I don't even, I don't even know where we're at, right? Uh, John, give us some updates. What's going on? What's new? Uh, obviously, I know you were traveling out in San Diego, which seemed like forever ago, but it wasn't that long ago, and then obviously Thanksgiving come, but we got a big night tonight uh, at the facility with... Uh, whatever you want to call it, whether it's Inflammation Fest, Detox or Retox, kind of uh, whatever name suits you best. But give us give us your thoughts. What's going on? Uh, well, it is December 8th as we're recording, and it, it is the afternoon of the inaugural Inflammation Fest. Uh, and I like to add a colon onto that, Detox to Retox. They may uh, change up, but hopefully we're having a, uh, quite a few of these throughout the year. Uh, a couple of, of motivations behind it. Number one, we are going into the winter months when the frost is upon us so that the uh, garden is kind of changing over. We need to actually harvest it and utilize all the food. And since um, everyone is not necessarily uh, mo super motivated to bring home uh, the yield every time that they're in, which we do encourage you to do, we're going to go ahead and yield it ourselves and actually uh, have, uh, invite everybody in uh, on a social hour to, to partake in it. So we're going to detox by a 45 minute workout put on by myself and potentially myself and yourself as well, and then uh, retox by partaking in some smoked meat and some uh, beverages, some adult beverages uh, probably. So it'll be a fun time to be able to, uh, to reach out to the people that you have been working out next to but may not have been in a social setting with. Also to meet some of the families that are going to come in by. My wife, my, my uh, son is going to be in here and I know your sister is going to be here with her family. Um, is Hannah coming by Hannah's as well? Hannah's coming. Hannah yeah, so a little well. shout out to Hannah. Um, so th those, those uh, things are going to happen and get get you guys to get a, to know us a little bit better I think will be awesome. So th hopefully that will uh, happen a, a lot more often. Second thing, uh, real quick, we are in the holidays, so bring your holiday cards. I'm not going to say Christmas cards for those of you who are not necessarily partaking in the Christmas spirit, but the holiday spirit, if you do have a holiday card, uh, family-wise photo and nonetheless bring it in we put it on the tree we'd like I to see from you on the tree mine's gonna be in sooner than later probably in the next 24 hours so we'll move forward from that beyond that I do want to say a rem quick reminder because we're in the holidays this is the toughest time from a health and wellness standpoint so it par it goes into and parlays kind of our conversation today and always within these talks but even more so a couple of things you know to, to remind uh, you guys of what we can do within performance unlimited number one I find myself traveling more, I find myself more stressed, I find myself in the positions where I probably need a massage uh, more often uh, nowadays. So it, you guys have the ability to utilize me. I will be here throughout the entire December and most of the January time frame. Mm -hmm. So look it up online or, or give me a shout if you do want a massage or you want to gift one of those massages to one of your loved ones. What a, what a Christmas gift. What an awesome Christmas gift uh, that that would be. Uh, if I don't say so myself, I'd love to get a massage for myself. Yeah. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, feel free to do so. Also, we are uh, doing gift certificates or holiday gifts. If you want to give the gift of 30 days, the PT trial membership that you guys all went through, for a loved one, somebody that you think that would actually uh, be benefit uh, our program, which there isn't many people out there that would not, let us know. Uh, we would love to be able to give that gift to somebody on your behalf or give that to you to gift to somebody because um, I think that would be a, a lovely, healthy, and happy way to, to say happy holidays. What an awesome opportunity to give the gift of Performance Unlimited this Christmas. Everybody needs a little PU. Right? Hey, nothing better than that. Hey, well, I, I think this kind of segues nice, John, into uh, kind of what we want to get into today. And, and again, we've taken a little bit of a break, so we're going to take even a, a, another break from the pillars a little bit, but I think there's going to be connection piece to that. But I think more important, and, and I know we both find value in this, is making sure that everyone's on the same page of ultimately what our mission is and that's the mission of performance unlimited and, and the mission of what we're trying to accomplish and that's not necessarily what you're trying to accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish that's a, collectively as a, as a unit and as a family which we always preach and I think tonight's a, a true testament of that of okay here is what we collectively 
are going towards and here's what our ultimate mission is and, and we had an interesting conversation today so I'll, I'll kind of let you start to rift a little bit off of that of you know when you hear that and you hear that phrase of you know what is the mission of performance unlimited what's what's kind of the first thing for you that comes to mind because I truly do believe is although everyone has their own personal mission I think we work best as a cohesive unit and I think it is important to say this is a place that that I'm proud to be a part of and here's a place of what they're trying to accomplish and what I'm a piece of and a part of this whole big thing because at the end of the day everyone has such an important role in here everyone plays a huge role in here everyone brings something different to the table that I think we all have learned to appreciate but I think it's important to say like here's ultimately what we're trying to do yeah mission statements are rampant we've we've all heard the company maybe you have even a family mission statement that you've probably been a part of your own company whether it's reciting the mission statement or creating the mission statement if you're a business owner but I think that that we need to revamp a lot of things in our life and our culture and the world around us as we may not be heading in the right direction through whatever statistic or metric you actually take to to define whether or not we're heading into successful days or negative days whether it's a political or religious or anywhere in between view I think that that we always it's healthy but we always need to start to ask better questions of ourselves so amongst the times that we've we've been trying to define what our mission is and right now it's literally stated to to be a part of our clients uh, story or to change and influence the lives uh, of our clients through movement based practices you know those are great and those are fine and that that's a mission all in itself mm -hmm. but but I think that every time that we uh, keep coming up with this conversation, it comes back to asking better questions. So instead of a, mi a mission statement, I think we're going to define, stake our claims in more of a mission question. And this may not be the final mission question, maybe it evolves and progresses along the way, but, but I think that everybody needs to ask themselves in a diagnostic and assessment way that what if what you're doing right now, what if what your beliefs are right now, what if what your actions are right now, what if what you're surrounding yourself with right now is hurting instead of helping you get to your goals and where you want to be in life? And that's not going to be necessarily a definitive negative connotation to where you're going to ask that question and say, uh, absolutely, I am 100% in the wrong direction. It might be a justification for what you're doing, but it's an all, all, all the more important question to ask. And for those who do ask that question, it leads us into better questions. So if I'm hearing you right, John, it's it's for, for all of us, whether individually, personally, as this tribe, as this group, as this family, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's a matter of saying, okay, what if what I have done may not be the best route? So then the mission goes towards, okay, how can I find a more efficient or a better way? And that's ultimately what I think we're all trying to do and uh, trying to find is for me, for me personally, for me as a community, for me as a group, how do I find a better way to do what I'm doing today? Because we're all in this thing, I think we all can agree, because we are seeking some sort of change. Whether you want to maintain weight or not do anything at all, I think we're all seeking some sort of behavior that we either or slightly want to modify and to work towards. We're all working towards progressing somewhere so I think it goes to okay how am I shaping what I'm doing today and can that be different than what I'm doing and I think if you can ask yourself that that's such an important piece of it because I think so often we get caught up in all right here we go another another way another 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 one of the same days but but what is and how does the flip you know the does it change a bit when we say okay how can I change what I'm doing and how does that affect what ultimately my main mission may be. Yeah, I, give you a quick example of what we're talking about and why you would even ask that question and how you can create metrics. And I'm gonna take it off, off of the personal perspective but look at it a little bit more globally in the sense that I, I talk a lot about and some of you may have had the conversation with me that, that the obvious industry issue that we have in personal training, health and fitness is that the United States is the leader per capita in gym memberships owned. Mm -hmm. So we actually are double the next country in the world for the amount of gym memberships that are owned by per capita of, of the citizens of the wow. United States. Who's second? Uh, England, London, or Great Britain, I guess would be, it would be. So nonetheless, uh, with that being said, 
we all know the metrics of chronic disease is still on the rise, of diabetes is on the rise, of uh, type 2 that is, of obesity that is on the rise, and we're at a staggering statistic of 60% of all Americans being overweight and 33% of uh, Americans being, uh, being uh, obese. That in lot, if you were to look, take those two, two uh, metrics, gym memberships are on the rise, chronic disease, obesity, all the metrics that, that would say unhealthy, right, mm -hmm. is on the rise, what would you deem is the status of the industry of health and wellness? I, to me, and maybe I'm, I'm uh, unique and alone in this, but I would say there's a seriously an expert, uh, expertise problem, there's an information problem, there's an industry problem that the sole mission of the industry is to get people healthy, mm -hmm. yet the health is getting worse as the increase in, 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 the, in the intrusion and participation in that industry is actually on the rise. That means we have to ask better questions. Yeah. Maybe what we're doing right now is actually not working. So how do we change that? And, and I think it, it goes to, and I fall victim all the time, of we want to get to a specific spot or a specific place. So we think the addition of something is the way to go. Hey, I'm not eating this well, but maybe if I, if I add this to my diet, I'm going to do a better job in this. Or I'm not, uh, maybe I, I want to get to a specific body composition goal, so I'm going to add in an extra day of this. Or I'm going to add in a, you know, something at night, a cycling class at night, whatever it may be. I, I, I often see that addition is always the first step. Right, and, and, and to reflect on that, really, I guess you could look at that, that statement of what if we, or the question, what if we, or we are, what we are doing right now is the reason we are not getting to our goals. If you're able to answer that question and say, everything that I'm doing right now is beneficial for me, is holistically advantageous and progressive for me, then you have to ask yourself, what is it that you're not doing, right, that is not getting you to your goals? And that in itself is a very important thing. But you taking that same question and assuming and, and reflecting on, which I think is a good assumption and a good direction to take this, that the answer to that is, well, something's not right, so I'm going to go ahead and skip the question altogether and assume, assume that what I'm doing I want to keep because I'm not willing to change, that, I, that the addition of something healthy or the addition of something new is going to get me to the goals. And I, and I know we were talking earlier, is I, I think this leads to a lifestyle and a mindset of constantly, constantly, constantly doing something or constantly living in this state of busyness in a way and that it's always something, it's always something. And and I think, you know, I read this to you earlier is this kind of this culture of heartaholism, right? Yeah. And, you know, and that's not a term of mine, but I'll take that from Precision Nutrition. And, no, and I love it. I love the, it. The, simple, the simple paragraph they talk about and the example they use is, you know, we may feel like we are always have to be quote unquote working hard or quote unquote busy. We may feel like quitting is for suckers and anything less than A plus is failure. We may set all kinds of ambitious goals for ourselves or feel like we don't measure up to a certain standard. Maybe we're not even sure what the standard is. We just know we're not there. We may distrust things or distrust things that feel too simple, like say slow and sustainable habit changes, or we may do a lot of difficult, easy tasks. And maybe we can't remember the last time that we felt joy, pleasure, or had fun. And again, that's something, a paragraph I stole from them in the sense that says, okay, because of oftentimes we aren't where we want to go, we feel like we got to continue to do, do more and more and more and more and more and we put more on top of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then we don't step back and reflect and say, what if what I'm doing isn't necessarily the right path or right. the right journey for me? Right. Yeah. And I think that's such a true thing and I think, it's, I think we see it all the time is that we all create this life of, of busyness in a way. And, and, and yes, that's a generalization because I'm sure there's not all of us that do it, but, but I, I think we see it all the time is that we do these quote unquote difficult, easy tasks. It's, it's, it makes come across as a difficult thing to do, but at the end of the day, it's easy because we've been doing it for so long, but then we just add and build and build and build and build, and then we wonder why we're getting hurt, why we're not reaching our goals. It's because we've never actually efficiently looked at what we're doing and said, maybe that path isn't the right way. Is there a more efficient way to do that? And am I approaching this in a way that isn't best for me as the individual? Yeah, I, I would add a little bit on to that to say that 
going back to that term hard aholicism, which is a very difficult term to say. I like it though because it encompasses a lot of what we already t have talked about in the gym specifically that we find wrong with gym goers and program design. High threshold versus low threshold. Absolutely. Right? But also, I would say uh, that you don't need to be so hard on yourself to think that that you're necessarily ignoring things. That could be the case, but I also think it could be a con contextual naivety. All right, a, na a naivety. That's the word. A na being naive. <laughs> naivety. <laughs> Stick with that, right? Okay. <laughs> so a naivety out there, in the sense that you don't have the information. Uh, that or unwilling to listen to an information piece that would allow you to create the right metrics and understand what the standard is to know what direction to actually go into. So many people, we've talked about this before, come into our setting within the first aspect of the first assessment and what do they do? They already have the plan set out for themselves before they even talk to us or listen to what we feel like mm. the best laid plan should be for them. And that in itself is a, not trusting an expert, not giving the benefit and uh, uh, the ability or the opportunity to actually hear a different perspective in a new direction, but also it is being naive to the fact that there are other options and other ways out there and the way and what you do and what you are doing and what the, your own perspective is not necessarily getting you in the direction that you need to go. So it's time to give that up. And I think if I'm hearing you right, it's not necessarily a, of saying, you know, what, what we all think or our personal biases are necessarily wrong. All it's saying is that to challenge those in a way, and I think we talk yes. about that all the time of, of, of just ask the question of it, where, why do I assume, why do I think the way that I'm thinking? Where did this come from? And is there a better way? And I, and I think that... They're not wrong, but they may not be right. May not be right. And, and I think full circle where this all comes in is I think it allows you to efficiently plan out and to ask an expert or whoever it may be to say like, hey, this is what I've been doing. It's not working for me. Yeah. So where do I have to go? But, the, but I think what's so important is is then there's a trust aspect to that whole process of like, okay, once you do decide that, okay, there's a better way to get away from what you've created, to then give that and trust that whole process for a period of time. And that's been my biggest advice to anybody over the last year when they're seeking out professionals, whether it be typically it's like a therapist of some sort, a chiropractor, a doctor, a PT or something like that. The leading statement has to be what you just said, find somebody you trust. And if you don't know anybody, who do you trust that they trust mm -hmm. and actually go with them, but give your trust to them. And I know that's a lot of words of trust, but <laughs> that's the important piece. Find a gym that you trust. Find a trainer you trust. Find a therapist you trust. Find a friend that you trust and ask where they go, who do they trust? Because that's the biggest idea of how you're gonna get your effect. It's that you're gonna just submit yourself trusting the process of those you trust in order to get you where you need to go. Because what you're doing right now may not be getting you and may be hurting you towards getting to your goal. So let's bring this back full circle. So we, we talked about earlier, the, the goal and one of our big things early on was we just wanted to talk about what do we believe is a potential mission of this community, this family that, that we have here, this awesome family that we have here. And, and we said, we challenged the notion that this idea of a mission statement. Not that we don't agree with a mission statement, but maybe it's gotta be a mission question of how are we, or what are we doing differently? How can we do differently things differently to become more effective for the individual and for this community? So our ultimately, our mission is more of a question of how can we do things differently, or how can we challenge or ask the question of how can we do things differently? And then from there, take a step back, grab, grab a piece of paper, a white piece of computer paper, a pen, a pencil, and just ask Ask yourself, put yourself, tally all the things that you are currently doing right now, and are those or are those not leading to your ultimate goals? And whether that may be a superficial goal, whether that may be a deep goal, whatever it may be, are those things helping you? And just ask that question and rate them on a scale of 10. If it's 10 to 100% that's helping me, one, no way, not at all. And that's not to say you have to ask that, but then it's to ask the question of and challenge, then why am I doing this? If I label this a one, if I've listed all these things that I'm doing that I believe are bringing me close to my goal, but I've labeled it a one, why am I even doing it in the first place then? But then if you say, you know what, this is a part of who I am, this is a part of what I've done, what if what we've always done isn't the best way? And I think that's the ultimate question. I'll, and I'll give this story because I think this story ties in so nice. 
is there's a book, I think it's Creating Magic or, or something along those lines where they, they, the author talks about World War II came and at the start of World War II, all the US, United States soldiers were waiting 30 seconds between setting a new cannon fire or a new grenade within the launcher. And they had to wait 30 seconds because that's what the manual told them. Well, then they started to ask the question, well, why are we waiting 30 seconds between? It doesn't make sense. The Germans are only waiting 15 seconds between. So they went back to the World War I manual and they were asking, why was this, why are we waiting 31, uh, 30 seconds? And they found that this came from the Civil War because at the Civil War, horses held the cannons in place and they had to wait 30 seconds to steady the horses. Mm. So they were doing the same thing year after year after year after year because no one challenged the assumption and realized, well, hey, heck, we don't even have horses in World War II. Yeah. But everyone had just kept doing the same thing because that's what the previous one had done. So I think, that, again, a short, simple story, an anecdote to just say, ask yourself, put it on paper, why are you doing what you're doing? How is this helping me? And if it's not, create a plan. I think the, uh, the next podcast needs to go into, after asking that question, how to test whether your current actions are hurting, or working or hurting you. And maybe number two, how you would even find somebody to trust if you don't have anybody in the first place. Which, and, and I think it's a great question, and I think, you know, again, that's a whole podcast in itself. Trust can take time and has a lot of uh, rabbit holes off of that, but I think that's a, a great question to ask. So I think it, it, in my eyes, there's, there's some big takeaways here, and, and again, like all these podcasts, I think sometimes we can start digressing and going different ways, but I think that the biggest thing in my eyes, if I was hearing what you were saying, and I think overall is to say this, is, you know, take a, a, just a second to write down on paper what you currently believe is where you want to go and what your ultimate goal is and then write all the things that you're doing or what you believe are helping take you a step closer to that and just grade on a scale of 1 to 10 is 10 being is that 100% taking me closer or maybe that's a 1 of no way and then challenge what you're currently doing is it or is it not helping you? And then let's have a discussion on, okay, if it's not helping you, what are the simple things that you can do tomorrow to make the difference? And that is what we're here for to help. Perfect. Love it. Appreciate you guys. We'll see a lot of you guys tonight. Um, Inflammation Fest. Inflammation Should Fest. Should be fun. Inflammation Fest. Be a blast. Take care.